first card is actually Leicester, but yeah. obviously I want to just talk to you firstly about kind of where you came from, so Sunderland um, and being through the academy there. So just the first thing was, what was it like kind of uh, coming through the ranks at, at Sunderland? Yeah, we were fortunate. We had a very good group that kind of stayed together from 12, 13, all the way to under 18s um, and under the reserves at that time. So to go and play with your, your mates that you'd been together for so long was, was really helpful. You mentioned uh, Jordan Henderson earlier. Just tell me a bit about kind of how close you were and what you saw and, and did you see him going to where he's got to? Hendo was just someone that you'd work hard as he does now. He'd give you everything up and down the line. He had bits of quality and and his final ball was, was, was unbelievable. And as a striker, we kind of just linked very well. But we also had the likes of Jack Hallback in midfield too. We all just kind of complimented each other. It just gave us a platform to go and play under 18s, reserves. And then when we got called up the first team that were just so comfortable with who we were playing with that it kind of helped with progressing very quickly. I mean, it must have been quite hard for you to break through because, I mean, even the likes of Dwight York and Andy Cole were there at one point. But what was what was good is we had Boy Keane who really didn't matter what age you were, how good you were. If you were good enough, you'd put you in. You'd tell you to your face how you weren't. If you were performing great, if you weren't, he wouldn't bat an eyelid telling you. And training-wise, he wanted to win. He wouldn't be frightened to smash you or get smashed. Like he just That's just the way he was when he trained. Had he got a, a hairdryer in the locker when he needed it? Uh, thankfully, I never really got one, but I'd, <laughs> I'd seen three or four in a short space of time, 100%. Pace is still up there, to be fair. Still, still up there. Yeah, Le the Leicester alone was, was incredible for me. But I, I came on, I scored goals, I made an impact, and that's all that the manager at the time, Nigel Pearson, wanted from us. Um, you think that's key for any young player, getting out and just getting games under your belt? Yeah, 100%. Um, it was the best thing I ever done. I could have maybe sat around and been fourth, fifth choice strike at Sunderland in the, in, the, in the Premier League, but the manager at the time, Steve Bruce, said no, go and, go and play games. It's important for you kids to go and, go and get some experience. It was incredible. We had a good year. We made the playoffs. We made the playoffs that year. We had, we had Cardiff, so we're, we lost the first leg 1-0. Um, then the second leg, I think, we're, we won 3-2, went to penalties, and unfortunately, I missed a penalty in the, in the playoffs to that, that put me out. It was the, the famous the famous chip gate with Jan Kimmigan. The experience that made me grow up so much and realised like this is where I want to be, this is what I want to do. Obviously during your time you would have seen kind of the beginning of that Leicester team that we saw kind of go to the Prem. I don't know whether you played, did you play the likes of kind of Schmeichel, Vardy, uh, Danny Drinkwater? Sven came in later that season, that's when he kind of brought in, um, he brought in Kaspar, he brought in the likes of Saul Bamba. Um, Real, real presence in the team. Unfortunately, he didn't work out for Sven. That's when Nigel, Nigel came back and we brought Bardi, we brought Mares, Knockhart, myself, Nugent, Woody, players that could could go and win games. It was it was unbelievable. Vardy in the break and he's, he's done it to this day, still does it now. just want to ask you about Jamie Vardy. I've read things where they've kind of said like he was a bit rough around the edges to begin with and maybe kind of didn't keep himself quite in the shape that he should do. Yeah, when, when he first came in, he was, like you say, he was, he was very, very rough around the edges. He was raw, he'd just come from, from non-league, but he had this unbelievable knack of winning, game, like wanting to win. He just just raw, raw talent. and. He scored goals and training. Listen, he didn't hit the ground running at Leicester. It took him a while to get going. It's, it's, it's difficult. You come from non-league and you've got expectations from going for that amount of money for, for that player. Harry Kane came alone for a little bit when you were there. Did you, I mean, what did you think of Kane? Did you see him becoming the absolute quality player that he is now? Again, you, you see you see watching training, you see people's quality. And listen, he was young, but he, he could finish goals from, from nowhere, left foot, right foot. His determination to stay out afterwards to, to do extra, do extras in the gym. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. You can see certain players that have got mindsets of just wanting to go one better. You'd be there hours after training, doing whether it was outside or in the gym, just working on his game. And he didn't get the amount of game time that he probably wanted at Leicester. But his dedication to to want to be better was was there for everyone to see. Okay, right, Wigan. We, was it a shame to kind of leave Leicester because they were on the upward curve that they were on? It was just a, a mutual agreement to, to, to cancel the contract and go there. And 
It was just one of them things where it was time to move on. The, the Leicester were going in one direction. They were having an unbelievable season. The big standout for me was you got to the playoffs again. We lost the QP in the, in the semis again. Um, we lost. I think we might have been one one at home and lost one nil at their place, which is which is difficult to get that far because we, we went from maybe 13, 14. I think we went on this run that lasted 14, 15 games. Where we didn't when we had lost one and, and that, and we jumped into the playoffs and. We played some unbelievable stuff. We had some great players in the team, and it was just one of them times where everything clicked and we, we progressed. Okay, so uh, move up north uh, to to Rangers. Obviously, just looking at goals there, looked like you were just absolutely ripping the net all the time at the moment at, at that point in your career. Yeah, I, 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 had, a, I had a good spell. Um, got out of got out of Wigan. They went down. Um, Mark Warburton was too good of an opportunity to go down. Um, they had a project to go up to get themselves back in the Premiership and absolutely loved playing in front of 55,000 week in week out who wouldn't. Well, I was always fascinated to see when Rangers went to the light. I mean, I've just got down here like the likes of uh, Dumbarton and Alloa. With all respect, like, is it is it weird being such a big club going to kind of smallest places like that? Yeah, it, it, was, it was bizarre because they had one main stand. Um, it was Astro Turf or the pitch wasn't great, but you had three sides of the stadium sold out by Rangers fans. The, the, it was it was bizarre. It was just a weird atmosphere. But the support that he got week in, week out, home away, home away, rain, wind, snow, sun, whatever it was, they were always there for you. And it was incredible. The, the expectation to go and win games was tough at times, but that's what you you get playing for a big side. You've got to, you've got to go and win games. And yeah, it was it was an incredible time that I'm, I'm grateful that I've been a been a part of. Just going to move on to Ipswich. So obviously Mick signs you there. Uh, to be fair, yeah. pace has been kept fairly consistent. Actually, it's actually gone up. I think yeah, it's not too bad. Up, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, lads. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you move back to England then? At that point, I, I didn't struggle. I, I, I played games under under Warburton in the second year. Um, I had a couple of injuries in and out of the team. I struggled a bit off field with with stuff going on. And the Pedro Kachina came in, and he just kind of. Brought his own players in. He signed Morellas, he signed Herrera, Dalcio Gomez, like all forward players that kind of played in my position, wide right or striker. At the, at the time, I was, I was a bit hesitant because I was kind of felt that I had something to prove at Rangers. I always wanted to win more. I always wanted to play, play more games and score more goals at the club. But the opportunity to go and play again was was there for us and I needed, needed to get out and start fresh and, and progress my career. Uh, Mick McCarthy kind of left a bit abruptly, didn't he? Because I, I mean, I personally felt like he was doing a cracking job given the circumstances. Was it just as brutal as that? He just had enough, was it, at that point? But I think at that time he, he'd had enough because he was getting he was getting unfair amounts of stick from fans where it was unjust. He was doing an incredible job, like you say, in, in the budget, the current climate. We finished, I think we finished Eighth or ninth that year, with a bit more support, maybe we could have done done a lot better. Like I say, for me personally, he, he gave me an opportunity, and I'm and I'm grateful for that because it, it got me got me going again and had a, had a very good very good season there. Uh, you moved to Derby, so I'm just going to ask you about kind of first when you first went to Derby. I believe it was Frank Lampard that signed you. What what was that like having such a, a legend kind of get you in? Yeah, it was, it, was, it was very very surreal because I knew there was I knew there was a bit of interest from a from a couple of clubs, but when I knew Frank Lampard wanted to sign us, it's the only one place I wanted to go. Um, I seen the players that he brought in at the time. He'd already signed Harry Wilson. He signed um, Mason Mount. It must have been quite fascinating seeing such a, a quality player like Lampard kind of learn his trade on the job kind of thing, because you must have just been seeing him develop before he rise as a manager, right? Yeah, um, he was obviously it was, it was his first real opportunity in, in management in the in the league, and I don't know, it just looked very natural to him. Obviously, he had Julie Morris behind him. He was a he was a very good coach, Chris Jonah, who's obviously supported him as well. And we were lucky that that they had that click of the right of who was coaching, who was managing, and it just worked very well. It was it was it was, it was an exciting time for the club, and unfortunately, he moved on quicker than we would like. But I learned a, I learned a play style of football, progressive, attacking you know, under under him and it was, it was a very good year for myself and, and the team. First thing was just when when Bruni came in, yeah. purely just as a, on, a, on a playing side of things, just what was it like to be around him as a player? Yeah, obviously his, his ability is, is incredible. You've, you've seen right throughout the years how how good he was and, and he came in and he brought this, he, he, obviously he brought a presence with him and it just gave everyone a, a breath of fresh air. Like we, 
We went on a good run. He brought calmness to the team, experience. He just dictated games for me. He was somebody that you could rely on in the middle of the park. And for myself to learn from at this age, he was, he was still, he was always wanting to do extra after training. And for for any player, young or old, to, to see that at his age was, was brilliant. Final card. So this is bang up to date with where you are now. Fairly representative of what you've got on, got in the locker these days? Yeah, it's, it, I think it's quite fair. Pace dropped off a little bit. It's understandable. I'm, I'm pushing 30, 31 this week, this weekend. So yeah, I get that. Physicality still high. I've got to ask you just about kind of um, Wayne becoming manager and and how you see things at the moment and kind of where you see the future of the club this season. First and foremost, we need to get a kind of bit of an identity back. It's been a bit of a stop-start year with everything kind of going on. He's brought in a style of playing, a way of playing that we need to just kind of keep going with now. We've had a couple of good results, a couple of bad ones, but we just need to bring that consistency back and I think he's going to install that in where picking up wins is, is first and foremost it's crucial in this league. You need to put two or three wins together and we need to, we need to look forward. We can't be looking behind it because we're too good of a team to do that. So he's a progressive manager, he's an ambitious manager and it's somebody that you want to play football for because if you do if you do right then you'll be you'll be you'll be in the team. So it's about working hard, doing the basics right, which is key in the position that we're in and um just try and build on that and build a real solid foundation that we can go and use and going forward with.